Suns fans, you know what time it is in the PHX. Empire of the Suns. Suns. Phoenix Suns. The Empire of the Suns podcast is brought to you by Sonic. Mmm, Sonic. Empire of the Suns. Hello there, and welcome to the Empire of the Suns podcast. My name is Kellen Olson, joined, as always, by Kevin Zerman. What's up, man? We're here. Last week, how you feeling? Whoa, last week, ominous, buddy. Oh, I meant of the regular season. Yeah, there yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. That's more like it. That's the spirit we're looking <laughs> for. The Phoenix Suns, uh, since we last spoke, had one of their best defensive performances of the season, if you want to just count it as two quarters, against uh, Minnesota. In the first half, 197 to 87. And then it was the Alamo. It was the last stand against the New Orleans Pelicans. My goodness, Kevin, the glee that I felt watching that game because I was watching a competitive, hard fought basketball game for what felt like the first time in like three months. <laughs> because when the Suns were winning, in my opinion, this is not to continue to. Um, we're going to beat the dead horse. Yeah, look down on them over the way that they played. But with that being said, I've been very transparent on this podcast that I think that there has not been a really like hard-fought, competitive game between them and a good team playing well. And that New Orleans game was the closest we got. I thought it was great, and I called it the Alamo because apparently that was all this team had left this season uh, because they, they put up back-to-back stinkers against the Clippers. They win one only because the Clippers either waved the white flag or trolled the Suns, some combination of the two probably, by not playing their top six players and then playing Terrence Mann for seven or eight minutes. And uh, Bones Highland and Brandon Boston had their days. Hard-fought game uh, until about eight minutes left. One of the most bizarre first quarters you'll ever see, and this is coming after the night when we saw the Suns be down 35-4. to Devin Booker was sarcastically mocked by his own home fans for making a free throw. Uh, And here we are. Everything that we have been talking about this year, Kevin, everything that we have been speculating at, and we have to continue to speculate at because, look, are they besties? It it sure doesn't seem like everyone's getting along right now based on what we're seeing on the floor. But we had been speculating that the pieces aren't fitting. Personalities are maybe not clashing, but certainly not connecting in the way that they should. There's no connectivity on this team, on the floor. It just doesn't seem like they're gelling at all. And then we get these two games against the Clippers, which were basically whatever is going on behind the scenes finally rose to the service in such a predominant way that it is drastically affecting their ability to uh, be competitive. And we'll see if this was just a get it out of your system and they're going to be able to play to the ability like they did against like Philly and Atlanta, you know, when they weren't really that good in those home games, but they won. Like, can you do that against Sacramento and Minnesota? I'm not ruling that out, but I'm ruling out the the switches flipped. Like, let's stop talking about switches, please. I'm done. There was never the, the flip into good for more than, what, a game two at a time? That was the, this area is closed off until you level up higher in the video game, and the Suns are not going to get to that level this season. No. They're not going to. I know you were on the radio filling in this week and I kind of want to circle back to kind of how the Suns react post game because I think there's some point and I reached this point I only covered a handful of games this year and there were two games in a row I covered at the very front end of the year I don't know if it was even December at that point but where bad things were happening I covered like the Memphis loss and I think the Lakers game and there were just the amount of chillness in the air from this team that shouldn't be losing to bad teams without their best players. Memphis is that example there. And just how little was expressed in post game pressers. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just popping in for a couple games to cover for you. I think at that time. Yeah. You were in there early December and then early but January. I again, went I to two games and I came out of that and I was like, I'm, I'm over like getting the, back end feeling of this team because it was just it felt like bs to be honest Mm -hmm. of what was said it was like we missed shots and it's like no you you lost to a bad memphis team with only jaron jackson jr and some younger players 
And yeah, we can talk about whether you respect those teams, but you're the Phoenix Suns who have a super team, who have three stars, whether you were healthy or not, or not. You had Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I wanted to say that to preface, like, that's still here right now. Mm-hmm. And that kind of came to a head after the Clippers game, uh, especially that big blowout when they had a couple of their stars in. Yeah, accountability can mean a lot of different things. And some of the accountability that people are looking for was accountability through the media, where you look at Ty Lue calling his team soft a week or two ago. You look at Willie Green calling his team soft a couple of weeks ago for the way they defended Devin Booker. Uh, that is not how the Suns handle their business, and that is their prerogative. That is yeah. their choice. I don't care. It's, it doesn't make me feel any kind of way, one way or the other, that they are choosing to be like that because ultimately it just matters what they're doing on the court and what they're doing behind the scenes. But clearly, we saw from Tuesday to Wednesday – Um, The the behind-the-scenes effect wasn't really there, to say the least. The first quarter was, on Wednesday, was baffling to watch. It was a, it was either a F you to the coaching staff, like, oh, you want us to take more threes? Okay, we'll take more threes. Fine, we'll take more threes. You know, like when you get, like, that sarcastic tone from a 14-year-old or whatever, like, that kind of, like, thing. I thought I was watching that on the basketball court in some senses from the way that they were taking threes. It was either that or... They were going through the motions to such a high-level degree that they were just running practice drills out there of driving, kick, and pass, pass, shoot, and all that kind of stuff. I don't really know what combination of those things it was, but it was a tremendous outlier with the way that they have played. And also just like you could see the body language out there. And the thing that I said on, I think, Wolf and Luke yesterday is... In all my time covering the Suns, the one player where I think he shoots it every time I think it's going in, it's Kevin Durant. Whenever he shot on Wednesday, I didn't think it was going in, not once. Because whatever is going on is affecting him. This is not just his highest minute total since 2014. This is not any of that stuff. It's whatever is going on like with the team dynamics and everything is affecting all of, the, all of their players. And yeah. when it's affecting their best players, it's going to affect their worst players, their middle of the line players it's going to affect everyone and it's really spreading through the team rather dramatically here and now they have to they don't really have to do anything honestly i i shouldn't preface it like that like they can just lose these two games lose two more and then their season's done yeah (laughs) and then they can just be over with it sure seems like that's where their mindset is right now i'm ready to be proven wrong but the effort i saw on tuesday and wednesday if they don't dramatically improve from Monday or from Tuesday and Wednesday. They won't even have a chance to win either of these two games, let alone win them. Like I don't care if Minnesota sits everyone on Sunday. Like we just saw the Clippers sit everyone again. I am there's a part of me that's curious about whether now if they get into a play in, that means that they're still doing what we've been talking about. But if they get into a play in game, I think we'll know within five minutes whether this team is like serious about like, oh, we just need to get to the postseason. But like we're past that point because they've gotten worse as the season's gone on. Yes, and, and as soon as adversity hits them, they will fold. They fold. Yes. Um, I will say I'm not playing even devil's advocate. I took the three-point shooting and the Clippers game very differently. And now that I... I mean, you're you're probably correct that there's some like... why, But something happened where they were told no mid-range shots or whatever to take all those threes. And I actually... I've been... I'm not going to go and say that's wrong because I've been like, they need to space teams out. They're not good at it. They don't demand that. And that game demanded it. They were missing shots. Okay, maybe they were forcing it. Whether that was defiance or being told to and listening, whatever. The point is, in either case, that shouldn't be happening with three games left. And it shouldn't be happening that, okay, you know what? Maybe our backup center position isn't going great let's try thad young at three games left um let's not make a lineup switch with royce o'neill in for the only guy here who has been playing consistent with three games left like none of it makes sense from whether it was they're all together in this and, and operating as one because then you're just operating like did you realize you have a week left it, nothing makes sense in in that scenario as much as I like the changes and I like trying new things and I like, like that should have happened two months ago. And that's where I'm at with this team is there's either panic or it's just they've already given in and this is going to become a very interesting off season sooner than you thought at the beginning of this year. Yeah. Uh, and to be clear, 
when I say fold, I mean they are not <laughs> attempting to reach the levels they need to anymore. They're unable to do so. Yeah. I understand they, they tried to come back on Tuesday. Yeah. I understand on Wednesday it still took something to win the basketball. There's pride involved. But I that understand doesn't... it. There's individual pride yeah. at, at hand, sure. But like collective pride, I don't know. Togetherness, no, yeah. No, I, I don't think anything like that exists um, for them. As of today, this is Friday we're recording this. The Suns can either finish 6, 7, or 8. Uh, the Pelicans beat the Kings last night, so they're going to need some help. The Pelicans are going to need to lose a game. The Suns are going to need to win two. Basically, if the Suns just win one game, Minnesota on Sunday or Sacramento on Friday, they are guaranteed top seven. Uh, they can still lose both and finish eighth, but they cannot drop to ninth. There's some tiebreakers at hand, but they're, they are going to be either three or four-way tiebreakers, basically, uh, no matter what. And the Suns are good on all of those uh, tiebreakers, I believe, is, is the way that it would work out because NBA, the NBA put it out today like they can't finish nine. Um, so they're, at, they're six, seven, or eight, no matter what. Most likely what we're looking at is we're probably looking at a seven, eight game, I'm guessing, in Sacramento, if I had to guess right now what we're looking at. Uh, but who knows? It, it Again, like it is not – we have seen this year – despite what they're going through, you can win a lot of basketball games. Like they're gonna they've won they they could win forty eight or forty nine basketball games this year, despite everything <laughs> that's gone wrong for them. They have an ability to win games. So I'm not discounting that they could finish six at all. Put but, it in the perspective of the thirteen fourteen team that won forty eight games in like I think that tied for the most wins by a team that did not make then it was just one through eight um seeded teams made the playoffs. They missed that. Um like it's just a different completely different like map of how the nba is right now both because of the plan but also because of the talent in the west especially um like yeah 48 wins is not something to just like dismiss and say is a failure but when you look at this team and how it's constructed and the stars on it yeah that's and again i said this last time you could have easily just don't lose three times to the Spurs or whatever. And then this isn't the missing the playoffs issue at all. Like that, that is it. That's where we're at. They already have sealed that fate where they messed, messed up multiple, multiple, multiple times when it just didn't make sense to. And that's, they might be in the play in because of it. Mm -hmm. uh, a good portion of our listenership is waiting for us to start blaming people. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. a lot we'll of people, time. a lot of people deserve blame, but at the same time, we got a lot of time to talk about that stuff and we're going to be patient about it. Like we always have been on this podcast. We're not going to jump ahead with that. And at, at the same time, we've been talking about Frank Vogel and Kevin Durant and Dem Booker and their leadership since December. Yeah. So if you're just tuning in right now, you'll just look for accountability or urgency headlines in our podcast feeds. I'm sure that'll be the one where we're talking about how all of these people need to step up and they have not to say the least, and it has been concerning in a myriad of ways. There's a reason why for the past couple of weeks I've been alluding to worries about beyond this year, mm -hmm. uh, and it's been because of this, and it's and it, I just didn't expect it to – I don't know if I – I didn't expect, but I'm not shocked that it, it happened this way in the regular season. I thought maybe a, a flame out was going to be more in the playoffs up as on schedule for the last two years, but not here. Um, and I'm very excited to start talking about postseason basketball mm -hmm. do we frame it as we are going to be back on do you want to say monday if they're in the plan does that sound fair when we have a matchup in mind yeah we'll be back on monday we'll really dive into the matchups again it's looking like it's going to be kings i maybe it's warriors maybe it's lakers i don't know maybe they jump to six and we're talking about a first round matchup with minnesota and we're talking ourselves into like a plucky six or seven games where anything can happen I don't pelicans know. have looked good they, their vibes are very different than the suns you see post game on tnt last night yeah they were all together excited team team energy vibes and things like that that the suns obviously we've talked about do not have yeah i think i think denver dallas and new orleans are clearly the three teams that are playing the best basketball right now in the west and it's going to be interesting to see it. it it certainly looks like right now with denver in control and how denver is just yeah like, yeah we'll go get the one seed like they can just they yeah can, they can get that done pretty easy um that second round matchup maybe of denver and dallas could be pretty great but we'll we'll look more into the west as a whole a little bit later but 
uh, once we have a clear vision because Minnesota, Oklahoma City tied right now on losses. They're only one behind Denver, so it's still very up in the air in terms of where one, two, and three land. And for those of you that are new this year, if we do get a playoff series, if we do get a couple playoff series, we are going to podcast after every single game. That, that includes the plan. So if I'm in Sacramento on Tuesday, I'll type away my little, my little recap, my cute little <laughs> recap, and then I'll come back to my hotel. You and I will hop on a Zoom call, and we'll do the, do the thing. And then if they play, have a playing game again on Friday, we'll do the same thing. And then if they have more, and so on and so forth. Um, for the play-in and playoffs, we'll have written previews on the site for every game. So for every play-in game, I'll have something. Um, for every postseason game, I'll have but what is basically a preview and a review. So a preview of game one, and then the review of game one is the recap and so on and so forth. I've done it the last three years, and it's been a whole lot of fun. It's my favorite time of year, and hopefully we get a long time of year. You can tell Kevin and I don't think that's coming, but I hope I'm wrong because it's a whole lot of fun when they make a run, as we've experienced in the past. I'm sure everyone else uh, can agree. Anything else before we go? Like, what's your pick? I'm Right now I'm picking their, their eight, and I'm in Sacramento on Monday. I think they'll get seven. I feel like there will be desperation a little bit. Um, the day off, like like yesterday, flying and stuff will help cool off whatever was going I, on. Or is it still one, two, three, Cabo, four, five, six, Parafino, or whatever fancy Italian? The, the worst part of this is I Belize. don't even think it's effort to or like tuned out and done and all that stuff. I just think they're broken. Yeah. And you you think you it's know. less of like something happened that sparked and it's like it could... I think it could just be a, our basketball togetherness is broken. Well, my I'm kind of on the same thing where it's like the New Orleans game was like a, this was our best shot at it mm-hmm. and that's all we could do. What's the point? Yeah, that, that could was, be that. That was mine. That's my working theory. I think, I yeah. I would say I'd expect seven seed, but I'm I'm just being hopeful for the sake of like me sleeping in my own bed for a week oh well i was not thinking of you because i'm a terrible friend but uh honestly like we've talked about this podcast has been difficult this year because it's like how much can you talk about whether it looks like effort or things coming together and i just want to talk about like a series of basketball games against the same with the same two teams the strategy like we haven't had very much of that this year yeah we would talk about that right now and like how that looked and like them taking more right. threes was a strategic adjustment, but there's just like it is not prevalent right now. It will be it will that be in the postseason good, though. But yeah. He did look good. <laughs> and we'll see if he's in the rotation tonight. I have, no idea. No I idea. have my doubts. Yeah. All right, everyone. Uh like we said, the latest will be back by I guess if we're looking at a middle of next week if they're six, you would say. Like to preview the series probably. We'll be in these seats previewing Before in middle of next week. Before they play up postseason game for sure mm-hmm, definitely so keep an eye out again we're fired up for this time of year hope you guys are too and that's blame game time baby <laughs> after that let's go fire up those engines and hot takes yell things into a microphone we'll be here doing that until then